just nice, you know. We, that's the reason I keep, kind of keep them around. Mm -hmm. um, but we we put seed into storage just for research um, purposes. Uh -huh. Primary responsibility is to grow plants in support of the PEP program, so the Plant Extinction Prevention Program. Uh, so majority of the plants you see up here, I believe, are mm -hmm. are PEP species. So. Um, 50 or less in the wild, uh, and statewide, 50 or less. And um, so we grow for outplanting purposes, but we also grow for genetic storage. The larger plants you see are probably more genetic storage, where we are keeping plants um, alive that really don't have a place to go out to yet, as far as a fenced or protected area. Um, that, that fit, fit them well, so we try to keep them alive in the nursery so that we don't lose their genetics. Um, and uh, in some cases, uh, we have plants in here that are single plant in the wild, so if it goes, then all we have is what, what is in the nursery. Silene Pearlmanii. From what I understand, it was a, a somewhat accidental discovery. He actually uh, was rappelling down a cliff to look at a, a palm that he had seen from across the, the actual valley or gulch that it was in. And uh, his, his objective was the palm, not, not, not this. He didn't see this at all. And then on his way down, he found it and he said that that's different. That's something that um, he had never seen before. It's a little bit closer to the original uh, versus like how many generations it has gone out. The root causes, man. Yeah. If we weren't here, this place would be pristine. Like, like I usually tell people when we have this discussion about non-natives and natives. So back back in the 19, you know, the teens, the 20s, and the 30s. But the logic was, they, they were de the foresters back then were dealing with a lot of degraded land that were just grazed by cattle or goats. And back then the thought, everybody's schooling was pine trees, non-native, fast-growing trees that can reestablish a watershed. And so I always tell people, I said, there's no fault to anybody back then. They were doing what they were taught to do. And hey, we, there's places where it did. They reforested their 100-foot canopies, 150-foot canopies. Um, obviously in time, as people learn more about, you know, ecology and how plants work, how they operate, how watersheds work. Of course, natives are becoming what are becoming the thing to plant because of the watershed restoration, trying to reestablish our watersheds. And um, so I think that the, the mindset is changing over time with what, with what we are learning over time. And for us having these nurseries, um, you can see what we used to grow in the past, the species are changing, right? It used to be the non-natives, the eucalyptus, like you mentioned, and now we're growing the ojillas the koa trees, koleas, a lot of the understory native plants. So that, that's the direction that we're heading in. And you know, it's a good direction, um, but no, like I said, there's no lack of knowledge in the 1930s. They were doing what exactly what they were thought to do and they did a good job at it. So for, from a forestry point of view, we have a bunch of projects, uh, whether it's small scale reforestation, large scale reforestation. And we use a combination of both our district nursery as well as our private contractors for the large scale stuff. We use our private contractors because they can handle the capacity as far as getting the numbers that we need, 50,000, 100,000. And our district nurseries, it helps us a lot because we use a lot of our small scale nursery stuff, our planting projects. We have small restoration projects, West Maui. Uh, we have some in East Maui up in the mountains and um, our district nursery really, really helps us out with that in that, in that case. So as you can see behind me, <clears throat> we have uh, our, our hardened area or our shade cloth area. <clears throat> The problem we've had over the years is a constant maintenance issue with the high winds that we get in Kahului. So as you can see, we have some shade cloth that are currently down. And um, so what we're trying to do is we want to rebuild this area. And so we have a planning process going on <clears throat> where behind me, eventually the plan is to get a greenhouse. So that way we can mitigate some of the wind issues and also improve our sanitation protocol and process around this nursery.